Shamil Farooq and I study in the Alkam School, Sakhavat Campus in Grade 7. Today is the part 2 of the Carrier Murder Case. Now I will read question number 46. Sorry, page number 46. It was 2 o'clock when she came to herself and called for the police. The criminal was gone, gone long ago. But there lay his victim in the middle of the lane, incredibly beaten up, the stick with which the deed had been done, although it was of some rare and very tough and heavy wood, had broken in the middle, and one splintered half had rolled in the neighboring gutter. The other without them had been carried away by the killer. A purse and gold watch were found upon the victim, but no cards or paper except a sealed and stamped envelope, well, which he had which he had been probably carrying to the post and which bore the name and address of Mr Utterson. This was brought to the lawyer the next morning, because he was out of bed, and he had no sooner seen it and being told the circumstances. Then he showed out a solemn lip. Now I will read the question number solemn lip. Now I will read question number four answer. Mr. Utterson, this line shows the answer of question number four. The answer is, Mr. Utterson was a lawyer by profession. Now I will read question number five. What was Mr. Utterson's reaction to hearing about the crime and seeing the weapon? Now I will read. I shall say nothing still. I have seen the body, said he. This may be very serious. Have the kindness to wait while I dress. And with the same grave face he hurried through, thought his breakfast and drove to the pole whether the body threw his breakfast and drove to the police station whether the body had been carried whether the body had been carried as soon as he came into the cell and he nodded yes said he organized i organize recognize, recognize him i am sorry to say that this is Sir Denver Scarry. Good grief, sir, exclaimed the officer. Good grief, sir, exclaimed the officer. Is it possible? And the next moment, his eye light up with professional ambition. This will make a deal of noise, he said. And perhaps you can help us to man. And he bravely narrated what briefly narrated what the maid had seen and showed the broken stick. Mr. Utterson had already coiled, quailed at the name of Hyde, but when the stick was laid before him, he could dub no longer. Broken and of Hyde, but when the stick Doubt no longer broken and battered, battered as it was. He recognized it for one that he had himself presented many years before to Henry Jackal. Now I will read the question. What was Mr. Utterson's? Reaction to hearing about the crime and seeing the weapon. From these words are uh, very serious. I am sorry, same grave face himself presented many years before to Henry Jekyll. Come to know that the answer. Now I will tell you the answer. He was very shocked. Because his victim was his client, he identified the weapon because it was the same stick. 
he gifted to his friend year ago now i will read the question number 5 what do we learn about the old woman who works for the mr hyde is this mr hyde a person of small stature he inquired particularly small and particularly wicked wicked or looking is what the maid calls him said the officer mr utterson reflected and then raising his head if you will come with me in my cab he said i think i can take you to his house it was by this time about 9 in the morning and the first fog of the season hung in the streets the cab rolled slowly through the dark dreary streets and mr utterson felt gloomy as the cab drew up before the edges indicated the fog lifted a little and showed him a dingy dingy him a dingy street and grubby eating grubby eating house a few shops selling cheap goods many selling cheap goods many rag children huddled in the doorways and many people of different nationalities passing by and the next moment the fog settled down again upon that part as brown as number and umber and cut him off from his lowly surroundings this was the home of henry jackals favorite of a man who was here to a quarter here to a quarter of a million sterling and ivory faced and silvery haired old woman opened the door she had an evil face smooth by hypocrisy hypocrisy but her manners were excellent yes she said this was mr hyde but he was not at home he had been a night very late late but had gone away again in less than an hour there was nothing strange in that his habits were very irregular and he was often absent for instance it was nearly 2 months since she had seen him till yesterday very well then we wish to see his room said the lawyer and when the room when the one the woman began to declare it was impossible i had better tell you who this person is he added This is Inspector Newcomen of Scotland Yard. He faced silvery-haired old woman and evil face. From these words we come to know the answer. Now I will tell you the answer. She was ivory-faced and silvery-haired. She had an evil face, but her manners were very excellent. She was a faithful maid of Mr Hyde. Now the question number G. Why will it be difficult for the inspector and Mr Utterson to find Mr Hyde? A flash of odious joy appeared upon the woman's face. Ah, said she, he is in trouble. What has he done? Mr Utterson and the inspector exchanged glances. He doesn't seem a very popular character observed the inspector and now just let let us in in the whole extent of the house which but for the old woman remained otherwise empty mr hyde had only used a couple of rooms but these were furnished with luxury and good taste a cupboard a cupboard was filled with food and drinks the table was set with silver cutlery and fine china artwork hung upon the walls a gift as utterson's post supposed 
from Henry Jekyll, who was much of a cons con connoisseur, and the carpets were thick and expensive looking at this moment. However, the rooms bore every mark of having been recently and hurriedly, hurriedly ransacked. This is the cloths lay about the floor with their pockets inside out inside out drawers stood open and on the hearth were there lay a pile of grey ashes as so many papers thought many papers though many papers had been burned from these embers, the inspector disinterred the book, which had resisted the action of the fire. The other half of the stick was found behind the door. And this line is very important because the other part of the stick found in the Mr. Hyde house. And as the Clinicked, clinched his suspicions. The officer declared himself delighted. A visit to the pen where several, where, where several thousand pounds were found to be lying. The murderer's credit completed his gratification. You may depend upon it, sir. He told Mr. Utterson, I have him in my hand. He must have lost his head or he never would have left the stick Oh, Above all, burn the checkbook. He'll need money to live. We have nothing to do but wait for the, him at the bank and get out the wanted posters. This, however was not so easy to accomplish for few people knew Mr. Hyde. Even the master of the servant maid had only seen his, him twice. His family could never be traced. Nowhere, nowhere be traced. He had never been photographed and the few who could describe him differ widely as common observers will. Only on one point were they agreed, and that was the hunting sense of strangeness with which he left people adopted. R. L. Stevenson. For few people knew Mr. Hyde. His family could nowhere be traced. He had never been photographed. From these words, we come to know the question number seven answered. Now I will tell you, it was very difficult for the inspector and Mr. Utterson to find Mr. Hyde because very few people knew Mr. Hyde and no one knew about his family. They didn't, they did have his photograph. Okay friends, this is the end of the Cario murder case. Please subscribe my channel and click the bell icon to get more videos. Thank you.